I wanted to make a quick introduction to what this video is. Essentially, just wanted to talk to Calvin about the process of making the new Kink Video 30. I thought it'd be cool to give some behind the scenes of what it takes to make these videos. So we just had a quick conversation over Zoom and hopefully if you know people like it, I can do more of these in the future. But this is just a, a little insight into Calvin's approach to making the video was. And so I hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, like I said, we'll try to get more of these going in the future. Thanks for uh, talking to me doing this Zoom call so that we could uh, just chat about the project you've been working on that like when I watched it, like, I don't know, I talked to you the other day and I was like talking to my computer screen as it was going between not only like the tricks that were going on, but the things that you did in the editing and the way it was put together and like all these aspects just inspired me to be like, dude, let's talk about this. Like, <laughs> um, and you know, we, we talked on the phone a little bit and you know, I was like, uh, let's stop talking so that I can like, I don't know, just bring up some of the things that I really liked and get some of your opinion on, uh, like how the project went and like yeah. how, you, how you feel it turned out and those kinds of things. I, I just think that kind of stuff would be interesting to talk about. So. For sure, dude. Yeah, we started like chatting a bit too much on the phone, so <laughs> might as well just do it here. Let let some people like listen in and hear hear the conversation because yeah. it was getting interesting. So, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, I'll just ask you a couple like basic things. Like, when did the project come about? Sometimes I work on things that we have footage and then it turns into something. Was this like a project from the from the start that was like we're doing this for the thirty year uh, stuff like that? Like, you know, those are yeah. things people don't realize how videos come come about sometimes so yeah so this one was uh it kind of well i was definitely aware there was the 30th anniversary coming up and obviously the office did too so even like two years ago i was like shooting on like a vhs camera like uh mm -hmm. high eight yeah more not a vhs a high eight camera yeah, yeah. and i was just messing around with the guys and being like hey like fucking this is going to be for the documentaries the 30th anniversary and that mm -hmm. was like two years ago when I first got put into the video director's role at King. And, you know, two years later, 30 comes about, but it was like kind of a unorthodox way that it came about. Cause me and Nathan were filming, you know, as you do, kink writer, filmer mm -hmm. uh, coming together and just yeah. daily between San Diego and LA. And then also he was getting on some Dakota trips while we were working for low and high. I so, remember that stuff, yeah. Yeah, so we went to Houston and that kind of like set like a bit of a tone for like, all right, Nathan's filming now. So like I'm going to mm -hmm. keep stacking footage of Nathan um, just when we can because LA and San Diego commute, as you know, is a yeah. three-hour there and a three-hour back. It's yeah. six-hour round trip. So doing that is a lot of work. and yeah. uh, You want to make it count. Know. You yeah, want to make it count. Yeah. So we... You know, between me and him, uh, we would kind of alternate. He was coming up here a lot more. He has a Prius now, so nice. You know, that thing's <laughs> great on mileage. Yeah. So, like the last couple of months was um, ripping up. So it started with that, and then um, Santi came out okay. for that was April last year, and I filmed with Santi, and I was like, well, I have a good amount of footage now. I have half a Nathan part, so I proposed it to to Jay and Kink and was like, hey, let's just do like a long form video mm -hmm. with additionally adding Casey and uh, Harrison. So getting them to fly out here to LA. Yeah. And then on top of that, I had footage. So I was gonna put a part out of myself too, to just kind of fill it up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And then with Perrin, it was on the fence due to his uh, injury that he, he's been going through. So he, he just got back on his bike two months ago and all the footage you saw from his part uh, he filmed with his homies in Barcelona and just sent it in. So wow. everything was uh, very just like, fuck it, let's just go for it. But it was once it was like actually seriously talked about in the office, yeah. which was October, then okay. it was like, all right, you got to get your action together and like organize how you're going to get these guys out. And we have we had no travel at all. So yeah. everybody came to my house and stayed at my house. Um, and I couldn't get to Barcelona to film with Anthony because mm -hmm. I'm currently in between my green card residency. So I can't leave oh, the country dang. until that's finalized. Yeah. Um, but you know, he also had an issue with the immigration, U S immigration. Yeah. So he couldn't get out here and he's waiting for his documentation. So everything <clears throat> was really tough and it wasn't meant to really turn into what it turned into, but it somehow did. 
Well, and uh, yeah, it was that was definitely was something something that I could bring up is like, you know, again talking more about like process and like the back end of how this stuff goes, even beyond filming and stuff. It's like you have to figure out how to take the assets that you have or what is like what you can make work. Like in an ideal world, obviously, like money, travel, all this stuff's no problem. You can make anything you want, but to make yeah. what you did out of its startings and then taking what you have and putting it together. I think that that's part of what I knew was going on. It's just like, is like, okay, how do I make this feel like the video is? I mean, the writers do their thing and it's great that you got like these guys to spots, even like locally that, I don't know. I feel like a lot of stuff felt very fresh, even though you, you didn't get to go on very many trips and, and stuff like that. But uh, getting back to the point of just like kind of the cohesiveness of it, that feels like it was something that was made, uh, to finish the way it is where, you know, I'm, it seems like you had to put those pieces together to make it feel that way. And that, so that's what I thought was really cool about this video. And that's why talking to you, especially uh, because you were at the forefront of doing that. And I love that part. And that's like some of my favorite uh, pieces of editing is just putting the yeah. storyline together and the flow. Like I have a couple notes and stuff about like things. And some of it is just like a transition, like Jacob cables to your part it hits it's so it's almost like not doing anything it's just the knowing that like his part winded down and you just brought yours in with like a jump and then it just set the tone and so all the video feels like it just moves on and moves on and yet i feel like i got enough maybe want a little bit more of each rider and then it moves into the end and it's like you get amped up at the end of it and so like yeah. all those aspects anyways you could probably yeah. elaborate on on different pieces of that but like just through you talking about how it kind of came to be made me think, oh, yeah, I've definitely dealt with that. Or I had this, I had that. And then I put it out. Everyone thinks it's like the project was supposed to be that way. But really, yeah. it was like other other pieces that came together like that. So. It's, a, it's a magic show. You know, yeah. that's yeah. what it is. It's like you're a magician pretty much trying to get that get that feel to make everybody feel like they were like everybody was filming at the same time on the trip at the same time and all that. Everything yeah. was apart and separated and timed correctly for the athlete to get here and uh, yeah. for my timing. And, you, you know, some projects, yeah, we're all in the van together. And, you know, when you do like maybe a 10-day trip or something, that's mm -hmm. and that's great. That's so fun to do. But like these projects are a lot harder to organize everybody to be at one location at the same time and like, like space. And like, you know, it was like, yeah, it is what it is. But I think... Um, yeah, trying to make everything feel and work together. And uh, I think that's the challenge that takes a lot of my, took a lot of my time in Definitely. my apartment right here yep. for to, until <clears throat> fucking two, three in the morning, going yeah. through music, changing yeah. music, changing the order, the structure. <coughs> Excuse me. Some things were originally planned to be different, like as far as who was writing in what order. Yeah. And by the end of the project, you realize this needs to come in like this and this needs yeah, to just chill definitely. a little bit and like everything changes and like there's nothing you can put on paper and mm -hmm. tell like a filmer or a you know, creative person like it needs to be like this yeah i'm telling you right now it'll never turn out like the way that you put it on paper it's going to yeah. change it yeah. and things yeah. happen and like and, and those, you know what it, it's, it's for the better though it's that's what better. i was about to say that those changes shouldn't be like a change for no reason it should be yeah. enhancing whatever you're doing even if that yeah. means you're shortening a video that yeah. means you 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 clipped a few things that take your attention down like as yeah. an editor you know you want to like kind of control the wave of the attention but if yeah. you start tuning out it's like well why don't i cut these two clips this will feel yep. faster and you'll never have a dip where you didn't want to have a dip it just moves yep. on you know so yeah yep. all these all these uh changes and, and everything you can't you can't predict them you start one but that's what i've learned about being an editor is that sometimes i have the hardest part is starting because uh okay. i have i have nothing to edit um if that makes any sense you just like seeing clips so i have to make the timeline and then i go wait why did i put that here and then i then i move once you move it and like you rearrange things and that that's like kind of when the editing really kicks in because like your first pass is just kind of like a feeler obviously yep. a, a rough cut or whatever but like the editing really starts when you make that decision of like when you're going to change from uh those exact the, the thing we saw probably wasn't that video until when like a few days oh. before or like the day up like i mean 
I would tell you right now that the, the, the Finnish version never actually um, made it to the, the kink YouTube. So I, I ran out of time. I had 16 mil film from the Sunday that I shot and I yeah. handed it in on Monday and I didn't get in until Thursday. So the Los Angeles premiere had the Finnish version, wow. but unfortunately uh, I didn't want to do any, uh, give the office any extra work. They had already uploaded the video and scheduled it and had it dialed mm -hmm. in and it was finished. So that being said, there is some 16 millimeter stuff that is important for the project that didn't yeah. make it, but it happens. Like I, wow. I, I tried my best and, uh, and that was on me. Like I, I decided to, to use film for the project. So yeah, that, and, then, and then there's just like a buffer of time to get that developed, put it back in the video and stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously yeah. the stuff that did make it. So I was at the premiere, but I didn't get yeah. to pay attention because I'm out shooting photos and just kind of get, get in the atmosphere of what's going on. So I didn't really get to watch the video. So the only one I've really seen is the YouTube version. And yep. it's great though. I love it's, the, it's I great. Love, so I like love that version. The, yeah. the, no discounting that. Like yeah. I, I, I understand what you're saying though, because you had more things that could have been in there that you, that would have enhanced it, especially maybe in feel stuff like with film and stuff. But yeah, I think it's great. So the, yeah. the only th the only thing I'm kind of bummed on, I watch snowball videos and all of that, and they shoot on 16 millimeter, 35 mil, and the big skate films too. Yeah, I shot in 64 frames, so super slow mo, okay. which is expensive to do. But mm -hmm. like, I had an opportunity to do it, and I was like, this is going to be the first time I get to use it in a film. Yeah, and it never made the cut. So, oh. love that. <laughs> but but you know what? I have the footage, and yeah. we'll, we'll do behind the scenes, and we'll yeah. do a full. I might use that as even just like um, to just to fluff it up and really show like what was going on too. Cause there's, you know, there's B roll and B sides to it and on yeah. the 16 mil. So yeah, I mean, it happens, man. Like yeah, Anthony's Ender was filmed on Monday. Wow. And we're talking like, what's today, Tuesday? We're talking eight days ago. Yeah. So he was wow. filming right to the buzzer. And like, <laughs> I gave, I gave him that time. I said, dude, just keep filming. I don't care what the office is saying. Yeah. I'll fucking take the fall for it if, if the video is not in on time. Cause we we're like, you know, trying to like, um, approve the video on yeah. Monday and Tuesday. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, I'm waiting for like clips, like, and like obviously the six day mill film or whatever, but I'm like, I still had footage to replace that. But Anthony was trying to get an ender. He was trying to, you yeah. know, he's 540 barring down Mac, bro. That's a huge thing, you know? So the, like, <laughs> the role, the role in like caring, like you're, you're, you care about the video, the outcome, and you care about it for the writers, and you also oh, yeah, care about for it for the sure. brand. Like there's, yeah. you're you're in this middle spot between there's like a necessary like business side that has to kind of happen to keep things functioning, but yeah. at the same time, like if if he gets that ender, then that changes his part, and you need that for the overall video. Like, and so you're just willing to like push it to the end. Of whatever yeah. you can do to get, to make it happen, and no, no, that's another aspect that, like, you know, like, I think a lot of people do care, and they and they want to do that, um, but they, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's hard, and and it's just cool to see you like push to make that happen, you know. Yeah, and like I want to see Anthony win, man. Like that's, that's what I, that's what I was trying to get. I want to see like, him get back exactly. on his bike after yeah. that. You know, he took a long time off his bike. Like, how long so, was it, dude? It has to have been like. 10 months or eight months yeah. eight to 10 months and then for him to come back swinging and just swagging on it and that video yeah. part i think is really sick and it's just anthony in barcelona getting back on his shit and like and then progressing at yeah. the same time you can see it in the video like yeah he's slowly progressing and getting better and better and it's like now he's like ready to film so now it's like let's get his visa and let's send him out here and let's go do something fun you know and we, yeah. we have plans to do a kink trip um in june Ish, well, that's so, that's another yeah. thing off the like you know marketing side of this stuff like there's this video left a really positive impact on like a lot of people like and i feel like i mean there's a lot of stuff that's been coming out but this one just really caught my attention and i see that like you know people again a lot of positive feedback but my my point is like um the momentum that like somebody like Perrin getting back and now if you got to work with him on something else or you got to put something else out soon like it just like all rolls into this like positive kind of like yeah uh, yeah feeling especially with uh your role at kink and what's going on now because i keep bumping the table but um 
Yeah. I, you know, I was going to bring that up too. Like, uh, you know, we kind of talked before about like the progressions of uh, brands and like how yeah. uh, Daryl was doing what he was doing for so long. And then there was like kind of it seems like a transitional period. This seems like a time when your part uh, like your video is speaking to like a new style because you're bringing that. But like, I think it's great. Like, um, yeah, I don't know. It, it was just it was just cool to see. And it seems like anything things right now constantly do need to like change and like uh, progress, yeah. and it's it's so core. And you know, Daryl's is so core as well. Like it, there was, it's just different styles. And we kind of yeah. talked about you know each each filmer editor is gonna bring their thing to it, and you can't do someone else's style. You have to do your own. Yeah. And but you do have to kind of adapt it to the brand. So I feel yeah. like that that section, even though you're not doing what Daryl did you are still in line with kink doing Calvin style. And again, highlighting all the writers like, yeah, you know, perfectly across the board and, and everything like that. So I yeah. don't know that that was something I, I appreciate it. I, saw mate. And I thought was really cool. So. Yeah. And, you know, speaking about, you know, Daryl and all that, like that was a really hard, um, that was hard, they were hard shoes to fill. Yeah, for sure. Looking like I look up to Daryl, he's yep. a friend and like, even when that all came about, it was like conversations. Are you sure you want to leave? Like, you sure? Like, you know, he had bigger plans like with um, his production company and stuff. So, yeah. of course, like made sense. He has to, you know, spend his time there now. And, uh, you know, when we did it, I was like, fuck, I'm starting from ground zero here. And like now yeah. I have to try and like, you know, almost like emulate, emulate uh, Daryl's style. And then after like kind of fighting that a little bit in myself, I was like, mm -hmm. just fucking do whatever you want. Like it doesn't, it's not even that serious. Like honestly, like yeah. if you just go out there with the guys and you film the way you film and like uh, use the music you, you use and like, you mm -hmm. know, and then let, let everybody kind of just figure out like, oh, this is how Calvin works, you know? All right, let's make these changes and adapt a little bit. Like, I think like I, it, this project, I finally feel comfortable, like, uh for probably the first time really uh, with the kink stuff well so, i think i think that's why we're talking because it seemed like that came across like it it, yeah. it seemed like this like met and i was it was it was awesome and you know i think i was also surprised because i talked to you even before the video came out and you explained how like again kind of stuff we talked about already the intentions of it kind of change and stuff so you were like yeah. oh it'll be all right and when you told me it was like only going to be 25 minutes i'm like 25 minutes is perfect like in this yeah. day and age you need that thing that you could watch that has some substance. And so it's a little longer than your regular web video, but it's just like yeah. you could watch it before you ride and that. It'd yeah. be hyped up. And again, like uh, it, the fact that it's a project, you know, like the DVD is like, like a, a disc, a device that you put the thing yeah. on, but the idea of having like a project and, co and connecting it to the 30 years of kink and like, yeah. it's like, yeah. it, it's, it's that's great. What was, it's awesome. That's what made it special too. It's like, 30 years in business, man, that's a huge yeah. feat. Like, and think about like the history of kink and like how many team riders and, you know, everybody who's been involved to get it to where it's at is pretty fucking cool. Like, yeah. And for us to be able to do this project and, you know, the, the, the 25 years was champagne. So True. that okay. was, that was five years ago now. Huh. And yeah, this was just kind of, you know, we try and do a video every, every five years, I guess, which is honestly not a bad way to do it. Like, uh, a fun video with the team so yeah yeah congrats to kink honestly that's a big feat <laughs> it definitely is i uh i did have a couple notes um one of the things i was going to say uh kind of back to the video and like the feel i'm not much of a gimbal user i i own one <laughs> and i've never used it ever um i think i really need to change that and and use it I, i'm holding myself back but um, anyways, my point is, I feel like you filmed in 4k. Yes. The videos, 4k video. Yes. So it was, no. it was, it was, it got, it got downsized to 1080 because of all the Barcelona footage. There was uh, a lot of it was 720. So I upped it to 1080 and then met in the middle. Uh, so, so well, honestly, that's a, that is yeah. a cool technical thing that, that people might not people understand is like when you're mixing stuff around like that, you have to like kind of do that. So and, I never thought anything. <laughs> I just watched it in 1080. So I never even yeah. checked because I don't know. But anyways, my point was, 
um, not to get too too far off on that, but I didn't feel that the video was overly like. I think you're using the the proper like current like techniques and stuff like that, but it didn't feel sometimes. Uh, I don't know production of uh, stuff like even some of the stuff I've seen in the past with your gimbal work. I don't know if you like changed it up, but it like it just went very smoothly. So it gave it a classic feel while you were using more advanced like things. And it seems like yeah. you just use them in the right places. And like, I don't know, how do you go about, um, I think, yeah, good, good, making those good, kind of good observation because I have definitely changed it up a little bit. Okay. The thing is when I originally got the gimbal, I thought I had to shoot everything <laughs> on the gimbal. Yeah. It's like, if you shoot fisheye on the gimbal, then all your long tracking stuff should be on the gimbal. Um, and uh, no, you can't use a camcorder anymore. You can't zoom. So this yeah. is what I thought, yeah. but I was definitely wrong. I was like, I love a camcorder and I love a zoom and yeah. I love turning off image stabilizer. Yeah. Just give it some grit if you really need to, because sometimes it's too much. It's too like too soon. Yeah. yeah. So, so what happened was I said, all right, I'm going to get a small gimbal that I can use as a handheld fisheye. So it okay. just acts like any handle mm -hmm. and it's stabilized. And it honestly, once you get in the flow of things, it's, it's very quick set up and pack up. It's, it only adds 60 seconds to your, to your you know, time. So everything fisheye is uh, stabilized on the gimbal. There's a couple of shots that I used in 30 that were long shots that were okay. on the gimbal. But uh -huh. for the most part, I just, I just used the, the camcorder and did some skateboarding, just got yeah. back to it. Yeah. Um, so like much so just tracking like J Jacob's switch foot nose to drop to, to, uh, to manual nose ice 180 in the basketball court. Mm -hmm. That's just on a camcorder, 4k camcorder zooming and skateboarding while yeah. the guys are playing basketball. And like, that's how I film. That's how I've always filmed. So I went back to basics really. And, and then incorporated, um, just really gritty film super eight. So yeah. it breaks up. Kind of, you, you can get those those moments, those hits of real clean footage, yep. and then you can get some some like grit, you know, some like, oh. so yeah, I did change. I, I think I think I'm in a good place now. With I, with my I mean, stuff. The, I was just noticing it's like just the tool came out in the right spot at the right time, and so what I took from it was like, oh, I'm not giving myself the option to use the tool at the right time because I'm like, oh, I don't know, gimbal like setting it up and. The, it's not my hand moving it. It's like later, yeah. like, you know, these things that like, I'm sure if yeah. I could just mess with it, I'd learn. But anyways, yeah. what I was saying is I saw you use the right tool for the right job. Um, it, not the right job, just like the way you did it. I understood it. Like as somebody yeah. who doesn't use the gimbal and I went and I knew you did, I was like, there's something different going on here. But yet again, at the right times, you're, it was like perfect, you know? And so I was like, all right, this is awesome. Like, Appreciate See, that, man. It made yeah. me. It made me be like, all right, I gotta, I gotta get this thing going because I'm yeah. not letting myself use it. But. Give it a, give it a shot. It's fun. It's just like, yeah, the little delay that you have when you're going left to right, up to down. But, but yeah. you can also set it like a, like a PlayStation controller or anything, dude. You mm -hmm. can like make it super touchy and tweaky, like so it moves faster or slower. So there's, a, you know, there's features in there. Whatever works for you, you know. Yeah, I just gotta mess with it. I just yeah. gotta mess with it. Um, yep. It seems like we talked about a ton of things I already, uh, already had on this. Uh, we just kind of went through them naturally. I mean, it's just a ton of like things about how the vibe and attention span and like, I want to uh, ask you a question. Okay. This, this podcast, is this yes. going to be what's, what's, what's going, what's happening? What's next? You're going to keep this thing uh, going? I like, well, I like this. You, you kicked it off, uh, okay. because you did something sick. So I'm hoping that I could just have more conversations like this with other filmers and even other people just kind of in the arts and like, um, I don't know, stuff that's like uh, got cool, interesting backstories or perspectives that we don't get to talk about too often. Um, yep. You know, I, I know that like with a narrow field like that of uh, topic, I don't know who all would watch it per, per se, but like for those who like it, hopefully they like it and yeah, yeah, I don't know. I I'm doing the Zoom. I'm doing it with nothing because I'm trying to keep it so easy and so low that I can simple. just talk yeah. and move on. And hopefully, the story is enough that people are interested. Um, yeah. And uh, if I make it too hard, then I can't sit around editing a 
videos more than the ones got, I already have to do. Yes. So it's like you've, you've got a lot on your plate. Yeah. But I'm enjoying this too. I hope I can keep it going. I'll just hit up somebody yeah. else and see see what they want to do. But also, you know, in the Zoom world, we got to kind of connect on a topic that just happened. And yep. uh, I, I'm stoked that you were down to uh, to talk to me about this because, like I said, I've never done this oh, before. Yeah. But it, it seemed like can't, it can't be too too tricky to figure out. Like I mean, in, we're, in the we're, always, we're always chatting anyway, so it's just the yeah. same thing. That's yeah. all it is. Just a little bit more in depth and like, <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit more of explanation behind things. What do you What do you think about um, how you know the the premiere went? What's funny is like it really it was a premiere, but it wasn't like a premiere. It was like <laughs> yeah, it's the videos going up on Saturday. We could show yeah. it here on Thursday. Just yeah. like if you want to come out, come out, kind of thing, right? Yeah, but yeah. it had a good turnout. Uh, yep. I had a good time. Everybody loved the video, and so it actually felt like it was a premiere. How did you think? Uh, it went or like how did it actually even come about because that was a fun uh, yeah. night no it was it was great so thanks to the shortstop in los angeles appreciate you guys for having us it's uh one of my friends will and his buddy blake who who worked there and i just hit him up uh probably a week prior and i was like would you guys be interested in like hosting like dude i just like i'm just gonna have my friends there like yeah just to play the video just to have like yeah okay we, we finished it let's like celebrate a little bit and it, yeah, it was a 21 plus event and all that. I was just planning on just, just the homies. And like, I told him, I'm like, I won't blow it off or anything, you know, to the bar owner. And she yeah. was like, nah, blow it up. Do whatever the <laughs> fuck you want. So I was like, okay, we'll make a flyer then. We'll do it proper. Yeah. And uh, it was on a Thursday. So I was like, there's a lot of traffic, 6 p.m. I said for people, to, you can start getting their video plays at 8 classic fucking video premiere don't play the video until like nine o'clock or something whatever it was eight thirty nine. but uh it worked yeah, out it mm -hmm. worked out and people showed up and i was super worried at the start i was kind of sitting there with a drink and i was like no one's gonna show up man that's and I'm just of course that's how it's gonna like, feel of course it's gonna, dude, happen. It's gonna i was feel. there with dave and dave's just like chatting to me like trying to like just you know talk and talk shit play pool and i'm just there i'm like i'm fucked i'm like i can't even like I'm like, no one's going to show up. And then like Nathan shows up and then fucking Colin shows up and then yeah. fucking you, Robbie and Dak show up and yeah. like everybody starts showing up. I'm like, holy shit, my friends are like coming to hang out and like watch this film. I'm like, this is sick. And then it was just like uh, all the homies, like people from San Diego, Vegas, like I was like all the way out in Temecula, Orange County from everywhere. I was like, dude, this is pretty cool. So yeah, yeah that made my night just to see everybody uh, together in L.A., just like watching a BMX film and yeah, it meant a lot to me because I was definitely stressing. I'm, I'm glad, man, because I'm, I mean, I'm glad it meant a lot to you. Of course, you're going to be stressing. You can't ignore that <laughs> no matter how, even if you thought that the video was the best thing you've ever made ever, like you're I always going to feel I didn't that think way. that. I didn't well, that's think what that. I'm saying. I'm saying <laughs> even if you did, you can't escape the feeling of the nervousness. I know, but I know. my point, my point is, um, you know, I showed up with my camera to f take pictures one cause I am like, learning and still trying to figure that stuff out, but what this is and, and doing the freestyle theater and the cult visuals thing that's coming up, it helps the BMX culture, right? Yes. So I, I wanted agree. to shoot photos of everybody together, enjoying a video that, you know, you and yep. me both think is so valuable in the BMX world to, to create this kind of stuff. Like, yeah. Yeah. And like, look at these people came out they saw it. And if, if that, the next time somebody says they're having something like that, people might understand it better because they yeah. saw a glimpse of what went on. And yeah. maybe, maybe there's a new trend of just bar, almost like speakeasy, yeah. like, like speakeasy. it's like, exactly. it's a pop-up premiere and you, you have to know about it Dude. to go, to go about it. So I might do my original idea is fuck, mm -hmm. this was the craziest idea. So I'm like sitting here and I'm like, fuck, it's the 30th anniversary. And like, I was like, cause we were just messing around with names and shit way back in the day. And it was, yeah. we're, we're going to call it like XXX. So like Roman numerals, it's yes. like 30. Yes. And it's like kink. And like, yeah. I was just messing with that. Obviously it was never going to fly in the office, but like me and Andrew, <laughs> me and Andrew Casaneda were messing yeah. with that. So I had this idea the whole time. I was like, it's like, fuck, I don't know how I'm going to have a premiere. Like, I don't think that's many people are going to come. I was yeah. like, there's a 16 seat theater, adult theater up the road from my house just 16 oh. seats and it's and it has xxx out the front it's the oldest last oh. one standing 
I've never been in there that before. That would have been crazy, dude. I'm going to do but, it for the next video. For the next okay. video, I swear to God. So just I'm letting people know now. The Bi Chic Bicycle Club will do a little mixtape. But it would be have been there. it would have been wild to have the thirty. Oh no, we're running out of time. Uh, all right, we got ten minutes. We got oh, ten that's minutes. Plenty. That's plenty. But I just yeah. I just figured I'd put that out there. That was okay. Wild. Here's, here's what's going on. I'm glad we have a timer. This is my first time doing this. I have no idea. This is what this we're gonna. Perfect, this is what we're gonna man. end on. And you said it right now. You just told me you were shipping out a bunch of shirts. Yeah. Hit, hit me with with what what's going on there, and we'll yeah. wrap up on that. Yeah. So uh, me and Nathan were kind of uh, just chatting while we've, while we've been working on this project. We're like, dude, it'll be sick to do a little collab shirt together. And uh, I had like an idea for an image, Super 8, that I shot of a sign. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're like, fuck it. Let's just like make a shirt together. Because I haven't done apparel before with the Bicycle Club. Yeah. That kind of just does like trinkets, like, you know, yep. zippos and fucking and rings and like, yep. uh, just like really small, just fun things, you know, mm -hmm. just like really easy. So yep. I was like, all right, I'll do my first T-shirt. And I was kind of, you know, figuring everything out. Uh, my buddy had a, a supplier and a source here in Los Angeles. We we put that shit on 100% cotton, the finest quality, pocket nice. tees. So you're getting, right you're, getting that, you're getting that premium. Oh, there the it premium, is. premium, yes, yeah. because I thought, well, if I'm going to do a shirt, I'm going to make sure it's the best. Yeah. And even though it costs more, uh, yeah. still still give it to the consumer at the best rate possible for considering the price point that, and, and the quality of the shirts. Yeah. And uh, yeah, me and Nathan were both like, Cool. And then Dave Fortman, who is the business partner of Help okay. uh, with Nathan, uh, he's an amazing graphic designer. He uh, whipped up the graphics, uh, built the little campaign. Um, so we all just worked together. Like we went nice. out, shot some photos. I, I, I did all the logistics on this end and he did the, uh, the online stuff. So nice. yeah, it all worked out. It was real fun for all of us. And um, yeah, I was going to do stuff like that. Yeah. I was going to mention that, uh, you know, even just talking about your intent behind what you make and like even down to like what the garment is, I think is kind of important because you didn't just print a t-shirt and put it out and you're not really, um, at least on your end, it's not like I'm trying to be like a clothing company as much. So what are even, even then it's like selective. So if you were going to buy a help shirt or uh, the collab, like, you're just going to buy like the one or the two. So the fact that they're the nicest that they can be I mean, is like worth like that investment. Cause it's not like you're, you're buying a whole collection of shirts and stuff. So when you do yeah. put on that one and it feels nice, you have a good image of the brand you just bought too, yeah. because you're, I like wearing that shirt. It feels good. You probably only yeah. have one or like I said, two of them. And uh, so I don't know, in, in, in some regards, it's kind of cool to know, Oh, I'm more, I'm even more interested in the shirt now because I know that like you've upped the quality. And so I, if I do see a higher price, I know I'm paying for that. Yeah. And when you're making this purchase, you know, you're supporting you guys. So it's Something like, cool. it's yeah. like, a, it's like a hand in hand kind of thing. So, yeah. Yep. You know? And everything, everything with uh chic has been always about the experience. So like when you originally, when I started it, when you mm -hmm. would uh, purchase something, or even when I just sent things out to my friends anonymously, cause no one really knew it was me at the start. Yeah. I had a typewriter and I would, I would hand type little messages and just say like, thanks. And like, you know, much love sheet. Like, everything was like personalized to that person. Yeah. And it was just on a piece of like, you know, off white paper. Mm -hmm. And then it was splattered with some pink just so you'd be like, keep that like pink, you know, chic and like that. Dang, man. And everybody had like a moment and like an experience and like the same thing now when these get bagged up, yeah. they're going, uh, they come in black, uh, black packaging like uh, what are they called? Just like the bagging. And then inside yep. it's in a frosted bag. So like everything's like Ziploc and like feel like you just like, every, yeah. that's the whole point. Like I want people to like feel like they're getting something worth their money. And I, it's even and we're not even at streetwear quality, crazy prices or whatever. Cause like, yeah. you know how streetwear is. We're just doing BMX pricing, but like just make it feel good. Like feel a part of it it's the bicycle club like you're a part of it now you yeah know? like let's go let's do some Dude, cool that's shit. that's cool i didn't know much about what you were doing with that and so i feel like i got definitely some more insight and i think everyone else who has seen it around and and, and seen what you've done didn't yeah we know a little bit more about like your mindset of what goes into it and how you want like yeah. the person who's into it to feel about the product and dude even the stuff you're talking about with packaging i mean in the internet 
world where things are being shipped to somebody's house, packaging is so important. You know, like yeah. when I worked at a bike shop, uh, we would take everything out of the packaging and put it in a case. And so it was like, all right, it's not as important. But when that thing comes to yeah. you and you open it and there's like an experience, even to yeah. the thing you're about to like discard and throw away, yeah, like it still goes in into it. And so it's cool that you uh, are trying to do it in multiple levels between better product and even yeah. better experience of, of getting the thing. So, yeah, yeah, well, exactly. Dude, thank you for uh, doing this. I know it's kind of an abrupt ending. No, dude, that's, that's perfect. Just yeah. hit some, hit some notes, talk some shit. And yeah, yeah. I like, I like that. Cause I've seen some podcasts that go for like three or four hours and I'm like, how the fuck do they do that? That's, yeah. that's too much for me. I'm like, I don't get on podcasts at all. Really. It's a lot for me in or in a sense. Cause like, I only have so much to talk about and then I'm kind of like, I bet you have more to talk about than you think. But what's nice (laughs) about this is you have to realize a long podcast goes over tons of topics. So we kind of just covered one and it's essentially like a segment of a podcast. And so I'm kind of hoping that I can go after that style of like, let's talk about this thing. And then even if we do another one and we talk about different things, like it can almost be pieces more so than the long form. I like that's how I'd like to as how I'd like to do it so but that way um, yes exactly I like that because that way then you can get somebody back in a few months time to talk about a different topic and just have yeah. a quick fun 45 yeah. minute conversation especially yeah. if I'm trying to kind of hone in on film or photographer or artist kind of stuff then love that yeah might as well just kind of build the community up through it so we'll see dude, we'll see if honestly, I keep doing it that's that's the thing <laughs> keep it going so, dude let's do it I think it's but, great what you're doing man I like yeah I, I back you all the yawn stuff let's keep it freaking rolling dude Oh, I got a, I got my yawn hoodie in there, dude. I should have worn it. <laughs> nah, I, I already got mine going. We're all, you're all good. I got the all white, dude. My I know that trash. one's that one's pretty nice. I don't even have I, that. Andrew Andrew wants me to, to go snowboarding, so that's gonna be my snowboarding. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna be like all white and just like when I uh, when I crash, I'm just gonna yeah. disappear completely. <laughs> <laughs> well, have fun have fun snowboarding and like thanks again for doing this and. Uh, if you've watched this, you are definitely already seen the kink video 30. It's out on YouTube. If you haven't, I don't know why you wouldn't. Um, oh, another thing, as we have a few more minutes, the video got to 30 K really quickly, which is a benchmark. I don't know if you've looked around, but if you look at most people's YouTubes, 30 is this uh, weird number that comes up all the time in, in videos of nowadays. And it usually yeah. takes a little longer for it to get there. You just went there right away. You have like 200 comments. And it all looks like positive. I didn't go through all of them, but I was just like yeah. looking around going like, how did this video like be received? Am I just the one psyched on it? Or is every, and it looked like everybody was. So anyways, yeah. obviously go check out the video on Kink's YouTube channel, Kink BMX. Yes. Right. Yeah. KinkBMX.com. Yeah. Yep. That's the one. And uh, yeah. yeah. And good job again to you and all the writers. I know we, this whole thing was kind of about Calvin and his process, but like without the writers, what are you filming? It'd be just like nothing. Exactly. So <laughs> they have to, uh, <laughs> they, they killed it and, and the whole thing was awesome. So thanks again, yeah. man. And uh, hey. I don't know. Thank That's you. That's about it. All right. Thank you, Vish. Appreciate you, mate. And I'll, uh, I'll see you. Well, I mean, that wraps up the first interview like i said hopefully i can get more of these going i don't know i think there's a lot of stories to be told and a lot of information people can get and maybe that encourages more people to get into filming and we get more videographers and and even photographers and other people just kind of in the arts to uh i don't know express their viewpoint on stuff and how they go about doing it so if you enjoyed it cool because that's all i hope for i guess i don't know (laughs) Thank you guys. Stay tuned. We'll be back.